My permanent campsite downstream is about to be flooded out by hundreds of thousands of gallons of water because beavers built this dam. And the only way to stop this from happening is to cut a new river through the forest by hand. Today, with only myself, my 11-year-old boy, and two shovels, we're going to single-handedly move an entire river. I love the chase and the hunt, and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want, and I always give it 100. Don't need a bank, no, I'm funded. Play the game like it's nothing. I'm always thankful for something. Don't take for granted, stay humble. Now waiting, better believe in your mind, because it's everything. You can mold, shape, find almost anything. Okay, so here's the situation. This pool right here is a new addition that's created by the beaver dam that's just behind these trees over here. The normal path for the stream is that it runs and kind of hooks around to the back over there. And it is still running back there, but an awful lot of the water is overflowing and flooding out this area, creating a new wetland here. And it's overflowing uh, back to the far side over there, which is what we want to stop. We don't want to uh, inhibit the beaver's ability to make a living for themselves. In fact, in a lot of areas, it's actually legal to interfere with beaver activity, and I'm not interested in doing that. While beavers create a lot of destruction of the environment as it had been, like this area here had been kind of a meadow, there have been little roses and things. They also create new ecological uh, situations like wetlands, which can be really a benefit to the area uh, as well. So what we're gonna do, what we think the simplest method is, we'll let the water uh, retain in this area here, and we're gonna cut a pretty short trench from here. Uh, there are some fallen logs, which we'll have to kind of move around. There are a few trees, but not that many. Uh, tree roots are always a little bit of a challenge for digging. There's not that many trees here. I think we're going to be able to get around it. So what we're going to do is have the water pour directly in here. And that should make it so that it's not flooding out our trail and the beavers can still do what they need to do. The way that we're working as two people is I'm going ahead of river and I'm doing kind of little uh, dots. So it's kind of connect the dots to get us all the way over to the pond that we're trying to drain. The digging here is pretty easy uh, because a lot of this is just silt uh, from you know, years and years of uh, you know, overflow from the, the stream. So digging's pretty easy. The only thing that we're dealing with uh, here and there are just some roots, but we don't really have to be all that careful about cleaning around all the roots because as the water comes down, the water is gonna do the final sculpting for us. I feel like we're doing a great job getting the trench cut in, but boy is the water giving us a run for our money. It is getting awfully close to flooding out that campsite. The way that we've been digging in here is uh, just uh, grabbing the multiple sides, uh, the hole that we want to dig, and use my body weight to drive the shovel in, and then move 90 degrees to the other side. And once we get all the way around it, we're able to lift out a pretty easy clod of dirt without too, too much effort. The beaver dam is just up over here. The water is overflowing it and heading off into the woods towards our camp. It's within 50 feet of our camp at the moment. We need to work quickly, otherwise the entire camp is gonna be flooded out. The type of shovel that I'm using today is a shovel made by Razorback. Razorback tools are really my favorite tools. These things just last and last. I think this is something I'll be handing down to him someday and he could even give it to his grandkids because they're so well made. I've used a lot of tools in the past where, you know, the, the handle will break off or even just when you're using it, you feel like, ah, I can't put that much uh, pressure on this because I'm afraid I'm going to, you know, snap the handle. I never feel that when I'm using any of the Razorback stuff. So if you're looking for a forever shovel or a forever rake or something that you're going to buy once and you never have to replace that again, I'd highly recommend Razorback stuff. There's been a lot of anticipation leading up to this moment. We've done a lot of work getting the trench together and at this point it's complete and we have a plug set in there and what we're gonna do is release the plug and let the water just rip through the trench that we created. <laughs> hey, what do we at this point I want to come clean and let you know that there was never any danger that our camp was actually going to be flooded out by that overflow from the beaver dam because there never was any camp. When you're choosing a spot to place a camp, it's really important that you take into consideration ideas like possible flooding. Now, a beaver dam doesn't happen overnight. That's something that takes several days to build up. And the thing that was actually being threatened by the beaver dam's overflow, we didn't just cut that trench for nothing, was uh, some of our trail system here on our property. That was what we were trying to reduce the flooding in. But when you are choosing a place 
place to camp, it's important to choose a place that's not going to be at risk of some kind of a flash flood event. Even if you don't get rain in your particular area, if there is a rainstorm upstream, that water can rush downstream sometimes really, really quickly and surprise a lot of people. So when you are choosing a place to camp, make sure you're choosing it in a place that doesn't look like it ever tends to get any floods. The types of things that you can look for that will identify a place that tends to be uh, flooded out are places that are along river banks that are kind of flat, that look like they get a lot of uh, river deposit. Places especially where you see a lot of plants that are uh, leaned over from periodic flooding, pushing those plants over, uh, muddy soils, all these types of things can be indicative of a place that you should be careful about because you might set up while it's dry, but it could get wet really, really quickly and really, really dangerously. And that's the reason why I wanted to create this video. But it's not the only reason. The other reason I wanted to make this video is to remind people that it is important to get outside and experience real nature with your real hands. So many of us today are content to just sit back and watch other people experience life on a screen. But it's really critical to get out there yourself and feel what it feels like to lift a shovel full of dirt, to feel what it feels like to work with a time limit where there are real stakes attached to it. I think it's important whether or not you're in a situation that's life or death or just trying to live each day to the fullest. Working on this project with myself and my boy, it was a great opportunity for us both to get a little exercise, to enjoy each other's company, and again, to live in the real world through our own first-hand experience. I hope you found this video enjoyable, and thanks for watching. Hey YouTube preppers, here's another video that you might enjoy. But before you click on it, I wanted to take a moment to thank all the people you see listed on the screen. They help to support the work that I do here over at Patreon.com. If you'd like to join them and have your name added to that list, the link's below.